No, it's for you. It's for you. You never close your eyes. Okay, questions. Sipke. Hey. You answer the question, okay? Because you should have been there. There. I'll just ask. You could have been there. I could have been. I'm not. Okay. So you're there. So we've seen a, uh, a piece of Orchard 2 or what's coming. Uh, obviously, it's going to take some time for that to be uh, come available. So what's next with Orchard 1? Uh, for example, uh, is there any ideas for 1, uh, 10, 11? 1, 10 should be released shortly, but what about 11? So what, we, what we know today is that we have 1.10 in the, in the pipe. 1.9.2 is frozen, meaning, meaning it's done. We are about to ship it. As soon as the conference is done, I can push the publish button and write the release note, so it's ready. Uh, right after that, we'll start releasing 1.10, right after that, okay, because the goal was to first focus on 1.9.2 and then start delivering 1.10 with new features. Um, and then um, we'll work on 1.10.x and one dot x, which will be one dot eleven so far, because we don't know when Orchard two zero will be done. I didn't say Broadroad, okay? I said Orchard two zero. Uh, we will start working like on the standard iteration on one dot eleven with new features. Okay. I don't think we have talked already about the next set of features for one eleven. I think we have. We have. Just okay. Just Please remind us. So uh, one of those would be the content deployment feature. That's more or less already done. I Isn't it oh in yeah, yeah, that's it's not in merged 10. yet. Yeah. It's in ten. No, it has been merged. I don't think it. Is. No, it's George, it hasn't. I, I thought it was on there, but it's I'm there. almost sure it's on there. Okay, so okay. it's on ten. So that's on the ten. Yep. Then, then something that remains is uh, would be RESTful APIs, uh, because that was halfway done <laughs> on a, on a hackathon, right? Correct. So uh, we should probably have that before uh, before <coughs> going to the zero. I don't know. Anything else? So RESTful API. Any suggestions? Mean, yeah, RESTful API. Uh, everything else is done. API Orchard meaning being able to query the o the Orchard content from REST APIs to build SPA applications, or I don't know who this morning talked about it. Yes, Rolf, who's not here. Okay. Uh, well, if it, if it only depended on me, I would say that uh, version ones would be pretty much done, and we yeah. would start focusing on version two. Actually, all of us. We could start focusing on that. We also uh, are working on the admin theme, updated admin theme, yeah. not changing how it's done, but just using Bootstrap and the new admin theme. That yeah. could be done also as part of 1.11, a new yeah. focus. Um, but we have dynamic forms. We have layouts. It's awesome. <laughs> what more do you want? Oh, thank you, Sipke, by No, the way. really, <laughs> tell us, what more do you want? Oh, 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 we can also take the time, if you have suggestions, what do you really miss in Orchard and you would like to be in 1.11? I don't, I'm not sure if any one of you joins the meeting, the weekly meeting every Tuesday. Okay, today, actually, there is a meeting. That could be, okay. It will have been at 9 p.m. here, okay. So, if you have anything to ask for a new feature for 111 to focus on, just give ideas. Perfect. Well Let's done. focus on Orchard to zero. <laughs> After that. So there is a microphone. Uh, what about uh, Orchard Gallery? Oh, I yes, know. sorry. An update on Orchard Gallery. So an update because it's. Uh, Exactly why I took my computer. So I have the gallery running, the new Orchard gallery running, based on Orchard, like the first one. Uh, for the ones who don't know, um, a month ago, the SSL certificate of the Orchard gallery, of the Orchard project actually, um, got expired. And um, thanks to the Net Foundation, we got a new one in time. But not thanks to Azure Cloud Services, we could not update it because our cloud service is five years old, five year old, five years old, and is not compat is not supported anymore. We haven't upgraded the OS versions and the Azure SDK versions because it's working so fine that we didn't touch it in five years. Okay, in the new get, in and new we get, lost the password. And <laughs> no, we, lo we lost the, the source code. We lost the source code. <laughs> I lost the source code. I had two machines that I didn't use anymore. I gave one to refurbish. 
this is this was the incorrect one. They are physically identical. So sorry. So I started working on a new one based on Ultron with the, all the new features we had. It was very easy. It's working. And the goal is to. I showed it to Rob yesterday. This morning. Can you? You agree? Perfect. Yeah, that's great. And uh, <laughs> I didn't lock my computer, okay. oh. so he probably yeah, sent spam email to all um, of you. And, and the goal with this uh, new gallery is first to ship it with a way to point to existing package package files on online that you put anywhere, and this will let let us um, have a running something running right now. And next to support Git repositories and uh, lets you also upload your own package locally. So this way, if you have a Git repository for a package, for a module, you will be able to just push new version on a Git repository, and the gallery service as, as website will be able to build the package dynamically and store it for you. So you won't have to publish all the time new, new things on the gallery. It will be much simpler. And the implementation is really simple, and is using the search API. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> furthermore, I think that uh, raises an important issue that uh, we have now all the big features done for Orchard that we could think of, but well, probably RESTful APIs I'm missing. And, but we should, uh, after that, probably also focus some more to build the ecosystem, uh, everything that's, uh, that's needed there. We, not just the gallery, but also a, a new community homepage uh, that was started at least scratching out a while ago. Uh, maybe also have a new discussion board, because we have that still on Codeplex. So uh, there's uh, still a lot to do. So uh, Martin, Martin this morning mentioned that the .NET Foundation could provide forums. They have a forum with all their projects, but we talked already about it, and the issue with the forums they have is one category for them is a project. For us, we need a set of categories for our project. We, we have like general questions, module development, theming, things like that. We, I'm not sure we could have a single orchard category question on the .NET no, Foundation. We would probably, um, what we've done for other projects is to stand up a, a separate a standalone discourse just for the project. Yeah. So that would be great. So and you could have that and with a mail gateway as well, so you can okay. email to it. So that, that's fine. You, you want one of those? I can go, I'll go do that this afternoon. We already exported the content from Codeplex in reusable XML. So yeah, no, I'm not sure. we'll, we'll have to have a look at import into this discourse. Is issue. This is it, issue it'll, it'll, it'll be doable. We'll yeah. just have to write some code. Yeah. So then I started that, but then so many customers to deal with that uh, he could not make it. And, um, well, okay. Um, website, also we need a new website. Brand new, shiny. So maybe when I'm done with the gallery, I can also uh, work on, on this website. Uh, that would be useful. You don't want to talk about ambassadors? Ambassadors? Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, this, was, uh, this was something else for, for the ecosystem, but we don't have it ready. Um, the idea was, and, and I talked about that um, a few months ago, probably on Tuesday's meeting, uh, to have uh, local ambassadors, really, for Orchard. So, um, notable community members who want to um, evangelize Orchard in their, in their local communities, and we would give them some support, whatever we can do. Uh, on the on the project homepage, something um, on the forums, all the companies working with Orchard giving support to them in some form. Uh, but we are not quite there yet. Uh, but this is, this would be something else that uh, that would probably uh, strengthen the ecosystem. One more question is about uh, one dot x and uh, probably also Brossard. Uh, what about localization? It's it's beautiful. Ask where about uh, it? really. Ask where are they? <laughs> David and Stephen. Yeah, there. Ask them. It's beautiful. It's working perfectly, it's working perfectly when you make it work. So that's <laughs> an <laughs> but so I asked them to write a blog post about how they made their website. They made a website, a Belgian website. I can't remember. I never remember the URL. You need to share the URL with us. And they support lots of uh, languages in their content. And the site is, is very nice. So I, I'm wondering how they made it. And uh, yeah, yeah, if there are things to improve, well, Zotan knows apparently what. But they made something, so maybe we should learn from them how they did that and what they had to implement for that. I don't know. If you could write something, I told them do a session next year or the year after, but the sooner the better. 
do we still have any holes in the localization story? You know, like content type names and stuff like that. Oh, we have um, yeah, yeah. There are some holes for technical values like yeah. this. Um, we talked about it on GitHub. We had an agreement about how to do it. I think mm. to make a new module to be able to locally translate specific strings mm. that we could gather from all the modules, like, oh, we found 12 content types, what are the translation for these ones? We found 12 fields, what are the translation for these fields? And anyone could provide us, or provide us for translation strings, which are not from the razor files, but from technical values. Um, uh, further on, localization is one area I think where uh, we could use some gradual improvements. Um, not big breakthroughs uh, are needed, just improvements. And for example, um, I'm not sure which languages, but there are ones uh, that, would, could, that could use some uh, less basic rules for plural forms than just singular and plural, because there are different versions for, for different amounts. Russian. Polish, <laughs> apparently. Hi. <coughs> I didn't remember, I don't have voice. <laughs> uh, Batman. Or, or, ch or chat market is a good idea, but only there, is, there are two products. And what do you think about merging it with the gallery? To, then you have to, the option to buy models. Can, can you write it down and, uh, and Ramon will... Uh, I have no idea what you just said. Yeah. We didn't understand anything. Can, you, a, he's can saying, you write down the question? <laughs> Ramon will read it. Do you want, do you want I Could you explain last to, night? He said, he said uh, uh, there is an Orchard Market, I think. Orchard Market. Yes. And there's only two models in there, I think. And it's a good idea, but... Uh, uh, Yeah, he's trying to say that, uh, uh, why don't you merge that with the gallery or something like that, I think. <laughs> so it's interesting because while I rewrote the, the new gallery, Zoltan forced me to look at the old gallery and to reuse all the code. And in the database, well, I, used also to, I had to also import all the content from the old gallery, and there was a column named price. Because when we had to build the gallery, we had to think about make the future about, OK, like now we want to pay for modules. Um, so today, we don't have it in a gallery because I personally don't care. We, there is also the marketplace, the Orchard Market from uh, Orchard Market, that's it, from uh, Sipke. And, uh, and this is, there is a solution. So why would we have to do that if Sipke did that and it works and there is something existing? And uh, how many of you actually bought a module ever? Raise your hands. <laughs> Higher. OK. Then how many of you have bought a theme? Which, because there are some themes on the gallery that are free for standard usage, but the license tells you to buy them if you want to reuse them. I'm thinking about the bind tuning, for instance. Yes. So I have. I, are, st are you still using, using it? Yeah. OK. So you see, that, that, not, not that many. So the effort is huge, and also to maintain that. And where that, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. So Sipka did that. It's a question of marketing, is what he's saying. Well, um, so. Uh, yeah, so it's for people to, who are new to Orchard don't understand what a community that exists around Orchard, okay. maybe. I have a question then, so, uh, simple question, sorry. What WordPress is doing, what Drupal is doing? What is Drupal doing for that? What is WordPress doing for that? Do they own their galleries where you pay modules? Or are there lots of galleries with specifics, like theming galleries, you can buy themes, you, or the owners of the theme is selling the theme, same thing for Drupal. And the, uh, sorry? Has their own gallery and you can buy the modules on their gallery? That's the question. We have our gallery. Can you buy the modules on the WordPress gallery? No. And it's WordPress and their community Rocks, okay. So, and uh, uh, well, WordPress is very different because they have such a critical mass mm -hmm. that even even a small um, percentage of, of, of WordPress users, even if only a few people are actually buying uh, themes and modules, uh, that's already a lot a lot of people. We Which don't have that sort of critical yes. mass, so it's a lot more difficult. And then I think it m many people are actually 
who are using an open source platform uh, wouldn't necessarily be willing to pay for themes and modules. They are willing to pay for work. So there are quite a few people here who are actually making a living from working on Orchard. And it's, it's not hard to sell your work. It's harder to sell a module, I think. And I also see the, the, also see the difficulties if we host the thing then they click buy on our site. Mm. And do we get the money and give it back to the guys? If there is an issue that module doesn't, doesn't work, do they sue us? I mean, it's, it's a mess for us. We can't handle that. Do you want me to handle that in my spare time? And so it's better to, for Sipke to handle that. I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry? No, they, they, won't, they don't want to do that. Do you think the .NET Foundation would do that? Um, I don't, definitely don't want to be building it myself. I'd rather, I'd rather not be in that business, but if you need us to help, let us know. Yeah. They can help you to do that. Lawyers, they can provide lawyers. That's what they do. Well, we can, we can, we can provide the bank account and things like that in the finance side if we need yeah. to. But uh, it's if there's going to be a market for it. And, you know, I, where with, the, like with WordPress themes and things like that, you, you can go to 99designs and and ask somebody yeah. to build you a WordPress yeah. theme. Um, I you know, tried doing similar with Orchard and got a big, you know. So, yeah, it's limited. Sipke maybe should say something. He made a gallery where you can pay more use. Yeah, so uh, we uh, built the uh, Orchard Market site and the idea was for developers to be able to resell their modules. Um, and uh, so, so it's there due to time constraints, we aren't promoting it actively, um, but we still have ambitions to, uh, even at some point there was talk about maybe having some sort of integration points, at least for uh, multiple developers that would upload their work onto the Orchard Gallery and then maybe also publish to our um, gallery automatically. Mm, th th these are just wild thoughts. Um, uh, but yeah, we still have, uh, ambitions to, to, to make it better, maybe integrate at some point, but it's all open-ended at this point. And as Bertrand mentioned, it's, it's, it's still at this point uh, a small community, so yeah, the, our, our focus is elsewhere at this point, um, but we'll see how things go uh, you know, down the road. I think this also has to do some, uh, in some way with whether the, the application itself is uh, a commodity like a WordPress site. So with WordPress, uh, I think it's common that you download or, or install a plugin, it, it works in a way and you don't customize it and it's there, that's it. With Orchard, um, I think this should be pretty rare because you take the source, you fork it, you modify it uh, because you are not, um, not content with it and this is not really suitable for a, for a purchase model unless you purchase the full source code with, with, uh, with a royalty-free royalty -free license. So uh, probably this will be something we should uh, talk about maybe in two, three years. Apparently, now it's, it's not the time yet. Question about documentation. Uh, Next question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, is there a plan for um, um, Orchard solution framework, uh, like uh, to have uh, the the main architecture described with some main components based for some specific purposes, uh, like have different way to go to the data, and you can choose this kind of approaches and. Uh, so the first answer will be, what was my answer last year? What was my answer two years ago in Amsterdam? <laughs> I don't, we, we don't have, I could give the same answer. It's community-based. Anyone who knows about Orchard could document everything, architecture, Orchard modules, how to build sites. And pe some people do that. Some people live blog sessions. Some, that's all community-based. And the issue is that we, don't have time for that. This is the well, spare time. There has been a lot of activity on the documentation. People, some people say it's good documentation. I've read that tweets or no comments that there is good documentation and that you can learn a lot with documentation. We also have 
lots of videos now because we record the sessions. Yeah. You know, I yeah. even learn from my sessions. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so there is good sessions about it. We also, you also will learn a lot if you join the meetings every week. People learn a lot like this because they follow with the new features, the demonstration. Every week we have demos about the new features. All you have seen here, you can see it for free every Tuesday night. Yeah. We saw glimpses, we saw layouts, forms. We didn't see Media Kitty. Um, we saw insights. It was working. App insights. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it uh, is. So yeah, it's. I know you are demanding more documentation, and we also would like to see more documentation. But it's the the last thing that we do when we want to do some orchard work. Some people, so there are some good contributors, there are some people who just do documentation. And we ask to, so to people, oh, when you know something, please write a doc or please add a, a blog post and at least there is something written. But there is no, there is nothing organized to work on a specific documentation. Yeah, so at, at some point in the past, we considered uh, uh, having documentation be something that, you, that, that would be a must have for any new feature. But actually, uh, most of the time, people who build the feature are not the best writers. So it's, you, you cannot ask that from, from developers. So the, the documentation has to be written by somebody else, and uh, that's a challenge. At one point, we started an effort, which was, OK, let's gather a Thursday, four hours, and write documentation. Yeah. We never went to the point that we gathered, but that would be like a documentation um, hackathon or something so, like yeah, that. So, yeah, and another thing we could do to encourage um, documentation to be written about the, the most important parts, we could, we could actually, you know, the same way that some open source projects have up for grabs features, you know, that, that highlights, okay, this is a good, con a good contribution to make if you're looking to make contributions. We could have the same thing and have a list of topics that need to be written, uh, that people could just grab and, and write. Th that would be a way to do that. So we talked about it two months ago during uh, one of the Tuesday's, Tuesdays meetings. Um, we talked about how do we reorganize the documentation. Daniel tried some things, but in the end, we, like with the wiki, but in the end we decided that the best solution was still what we had, which is a GitHub-baked website generated. Okay, we had a wiki done. before. We had a wiki before. But the GitHub is much better because we have yeah. pull requests and everything. Um, Following your idea about um, for grabs, that would be interesting to have a full talk, existing a full talk of what we need mm. and empty placeholders. And the read the docs is interesting for that. The read the docs is like a website yeah. which does works exactly the same. You have a GitHub repository and it generates a website to read documentation. To, and this is what ASP.NET is using, entity framework. Um, um, more. Yeah, so it works with repositories, but you get the additional benefits of uh, a table of contents yes. and stuff like what that. What you did and is uh, what they did. Yeah. Well, no. I, I actually uh, we are, we have an automatic table of contents yeah. inside of the topic. We don't have automatic generation of the table of contents for the whole documentation. Okay. So we, we yeah. still need that yes. because yeah. actually we have some documentation that is hidden in the site. You need to search for it. It's not in the table of mm -hmm. contents. So this needs yeah. to be fixed. We need to have a a good table of contents. So that would be a way to have placeholders and yeah. let people contribute. And with pull requests also, that would be good. I don't know how you are happy with that, uh, Taylor, with the documentation. Again, we should add, should add Daniel Roth. Uh, Martin mentioned him, I think, who is the PM of uh, ASP.NET MEC. It's still developing a lot now. So like, we have, we have Wait, hold on. <laughs> so for all of our stuff right now, it's, uh, it's still developing. And we have dedicated documentation writers for it. But the problem with that is they get the baseline done, and then the second a breaking change or something comes in, it's up to the developers to then contribute a pull request that then fixes up what is then no longer valid. Well, your issue is more that it's moving always. Yes. Like you rewrite stuff, so one thing you say today is wrong tomorrow. Yep. Our issue is that, no, the search module is done, the whatever module is done, but we don't have any documentation. Yeah. So that, that uh, we might not so have this issue. ASP.NET is using read the docs. Yes. Uh, .NET Core is also using read the docs. Okay. So everybody is moving. I don't that. think we talked about read the docs when, when we did the meeting. Yeah, we should. It's I, something I mean, to consider. When, when we did it, I don't think we mentioned that. We mentioned Wiki, we mentioned GitHub, we mentioned right. many things. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but also a, a shout out to all the beginners here. Uh, this is where you can contribute the most easily. 
Mm -hmm. So, uh, because when you are a beginner, you need documentation, uh, but uh, <laughs> in the case of Fortune, probably you you won't have it. So after you have to dig everything up and uh, and and find out how something works. Now at that point, please add it to the documentation because because once you are over that, you won't need documentation anymore and you you won't write it. Yeah, uh, that's so with that's with all the experts. Yeah, horribly. Uh, if if you don't know how to use a feature and there isn't documentation, then you need to learn it the hard way and understand how it works. And then you can write the documentation and then you don't need it anymore. But yeah. I don't think Zoltan should answer this question because he's selling training. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's a conspiracy. And at the same That's time, right Orchard Dojo is from Lambic. That's right. So how, how did you find out? Uh, I'm, I'm there are logos everywhere on Orchard Dojo. <laughs> it's, it's the design that betrays you. I'm not sure whether this is an insult. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it the same designer who made the t-shirts? Uh, no. No, it's a yeah. different. Oh, I can see that. Is there any plan to support multi-site? Sorry, is? Multi-site, where you can inherit content. Oh. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. uh, so uh, the the question is yeah. when will you when will we support multi site uh, as opposed to multi tenancy? So not uh, not as an like isolation uh, mechanism, but more like um, uh, being able to share contents between between tenants. Yeah. How, so how would you define this? Because I think we we support this already. But uh, how do you define a, a mini site or a yeah, multi -site? Like a primary site, and then the other sites sort of inherit from it, so you can al overwrite the content. That but would sense. that mean that they use different themes or different set of but users? Potentially, yeah. Federated yeah. sites and uh, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, so I think that will be nicely handled by uh, 2.0 yeah. uh, because of that thing about uh, content stores. Um, if you have that, it's trivial to have a common content store that is shared by all the sites. Um, so you could use multi-tenancy actually to, to implement yeah. that by just having that, that common content store that you use in addition to the local content stores that are uh, scoped to the tenant. So that would be an easy way to do it. Sebastian shaking his head. <laughs> I see all the constraints with that. I've, uh, okay. Let's say you want ordering and you have three content stores and so the order what? is based on query. So oh, what? Uh, uh, you should have uh, a that, that works perfectly. Yeah, I want to see. He doesn't get it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hammond wants to say something. L let's awkwardly wait some more. Hi, I'm going to try to just lay it here. <laughs> yeah. Una cerveza por Sergio, por favor. Twist the throat. Okay. He is suggesting uh, to use the same repository for documentation and code, source code, and uh, <laughs> and um, uh, forcing developers to document everything that they. If, if we force developers in to the do pull anything, request. they will do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of agree. Is that well translated? We've got a lot yeah. of contributions so far since we've moved to GitHub. It's crazy, the difference. Like, I think there are 250 pull requests closed in the last three months. Pull requests accepted, OK? Like, crazy. <laughs> and plus, the one that Sequena can re write whenever he wants to the repository, so boof, it goes fast. So if we, ask we don't ask people to write unit tests. We are very happy if someone writes an unit test. If we ask people to write a unit test, they, will, they won't write any PR. I'm telling you, if we ask people to write documentation, if they wanted to do so, they would have done it. So if we force people to do anything, they will do nothing, I'm sure. Oh, yes, yeah, some, some will do. Okay, but and and, and I, yeah, that's community. That's if we pay people, we will get something, okay, for sure. Um, something else also we can do, we talked about it uh, years ago. Um, we will ask Donet Foundation to pay you. 
<laughs> no, <laughs> to do something. We could. Um, what we can do is if you want to organize some uh, uh, meetups or some gatherings to work on documentation, to work on a feature, documentation is better. Sergio so wants documentation. Uh, you can do it at uh, XK Project to write some good English documentation. Uh, on some module or some feature, people will, re will, re read, will proofreading you. Proofread you, sorry. Please fix my English. Um, and uh, we can participate in paying pizzas, drinks, and everything. So you can have people come and help because there is pizza, otherwise, they will not come. Um, yeah. So we can do that. Donut Foundation can do that. So tomorrow, meet up at XK Project to write some documentation about the Dynamic Forms module. <laughs> uh, well, someone was mentioning on Gitter, uh, Jeff uh, Olmstead. Thank you. I never. Uh, he was mentioning two hours uh, ago that it was great to be able to see Bertrand's live blogging because he was learning things. It's documentation. We could make it more formal in the documentation page. Or whatever Sipke said could be written down in tutorials or whatever. That's easy job. Yeah, actually, one of the other ideas would be to, to make uh, the, the official documentation a bit more like a repository of links. So we have, if we have already documented something, but we don't have time to reprocess it, then at least add it as a link. So if you want to mm -hmm. um, learn about layouts and dynamic forms, go to Sipke's blog. Um, this would be a, a shortcut um, temporarily. Yeah, it makes searching a little more yeah, challenging. But temporarily. Yeah. Um, so one question now that Bertrand is back to Microsoft. Uh, are yeah. there are there any plans that the team or our team will grow up officially? What we are thousands of people. How do you want to grow more than that? Uh, Two thousand one or three? <laughs> I, I didn't get that. The, the question is: Will the Ultra team in Microsoft grow, or re oh. be rebuilt, or whatever? <laughs> Who knows? Well, uh, um, so that's a, yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, he asked the question last year. I did? That's what he said. Yeah. OK. Um, so I think the, the whole process we went through, um, which was to transfer ownership of the project to the community, um, is n unlikely to be reversed. <laughs> so it's a good thing that it's in the hands of the community today. Um, that doesn't mean that, that we couldn't have Microsoft employees more than just Sebastian working full time on, on our child. Um, I, I see no signs of this happening, but it uh, could happen. I suppose if, if, there is a, if there is a business justification, let's say for the ASP.NET team, for example, uh, let's say that the ASP.NET team wanted uh, vNext to, to run uh, on ASP.NET 5 at a given date, for example, or whatever. Well, they would have to I put, put resources on it, right? But So I, I, I could see, I don't know, maybe temporary resources being allocated, stuff like that. Otherwise, I, I don't think I've seen any signs of, of this happening. Does it mean that it can't? I don't know. I have many comments to that. Sure, first, you're, you're closer to the, the first case with this idea. Even the like ASP.NET MVC team is under, under yeah. how do you say, under right. that too. Under you have no idea how, how much pressure uh, there is, especially currently. Under it's crazy. Not enough people working on that. Under, not enough people, under resourced. Well, okay? oh, yeah. You need more developers. Okay? You have too much work on Look, this poor guy is doing everything. And yeah, when he's not on holiday. Him, yeah. him and Intens. Intens are working on your team just yeah. to build stuff. Okay, what's his name? The, the yeah. John. No, the, the one on your right. <laughs> what's his name? Ajay. Ajay, the intern. Ajay, the intern is helping him. <laughs> it's recorded, that's fine. Um, so they are under resourced. So how come will they be able to say, let's put more people on Orchard, which is not a priority? ASP.NET MVC. And ASP.NET 5 is the priority. And those are project anti-framework and everything. 
So first, it's very hard to, to, to be a team. Yeah, and what I said was hypothetical, just to be yeah. clear. Um, then, something which will matter, though, is let's say tomorrow you all use Azure because of Orchard. Then there will be 10 more developers on Orchard, OK? <laughs> so use Azure because of Orchard, there will be more developers on Orchard because it will make money because of Orchard, OK? That is good. No, but that's true. <laughs> I work in, we work in the Azure group. So yeah. the goal is to promote Azure, to make things work the best on Azure, the best tool for the cloud for Azure. Okay. So if Orchard is the best tool for you to make websites on Azure, if .NET is the best website, the best uh, solution to work on Orchard on Azure, let's make it work and more people. True. Uh, I hope it is. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. I don't care, but. <laughs> But actually, uh, how come that uh, there are not more people contributing to Orchard in an ad hoc way from and Microsoft? This is because my a lot of people yeah, are working Yeah, that's a great question. It. That's my third uh, yeah. comment, actually, because people from Microsoft are contributing to Orchard. So there are more and more people in Microsoft work, working using Orchard okay, every day. Like, you know, the Halo team, last year they, they talked about it at the... Yeah. And, and they did release uh, their stuff. There is their, their, their website, which is used so and, uh, as a... Comment. So their website, they don't use the front end, so you won't see right click, view source, orchard. They just use the back end and they feed all the Halo story from Xbox, from the websites, using the orchard uh, content management. And those guys, they are like 10 working with orchard every day, building content, building modules, building features, fixing stuff, making a, a improvements on the performance. Recently, we, we got um, the um, background processing task fixed because they provided us the code they, they made for that, and it's a, it has been a PR then. So they, have, they also shared the module for uh, taxonomy, RESTful taxonomy, and RESTful uh, uh, APIs uh, also for that. We have teams in Xbox. There are teams in Office. So you saw, I, we talked about it yesterday, Discover SharePoint, uh, dev.office.com. Uh, so many websites in Office uh, working on that. I have, I'm in contact every week with people from Office asking questions about Orchard. Um, so, I know new projects working on Orchard in Microsoft. So, and these guys, they contribute. They want to also provide as an open source. And they ask, how, how do I contribute to, can, can I? Can I have, do I have to ask my manager? So they will ask the Net Foundation, how do we do? How do we contribute to Orchard? We are Microsoft employees. They just sign the CLA and it's done. So, uh, and that's a really solid long-term uh, way to make things advance because those guys, they are like you. They, they contribute to Orchard because they use Orchard and they need it. Uh, where, uh, as compared with uh, a dedicated team, which potentially would be more unstable because that, that business motivation to just build our chart for the sake of it might actually vanish uh, tomorrow. See what I mean? So I, I, it already did in the so past. So it ha it's happened already. So when I do a conference and I talk about the history of Orchard to non-Orchard developers who don't know Orchard, I show the timeline of commits and lines of code and how it yeah. evolved. When we had a team of 10 developers and engineers, we had less. and when we, didn't, when we didn't have anyone, like just Bertrand and I were working at Microsoft on that, and after with the community, there is a point where the team was dissolved, okay? When Scott Guthrie took over Azure, and we need, lots, we need a lot of people to work on what is today the Azure portal. Okay? So they need lots of client developers, .NET developers, and doing that. So they went there. Um, if you look at the graph, you don't see that happening. This is when Bertrand decided we need to make it community-based. And you don't see that. And look at the last year, it's exponential. In terms of PR, in terms of lines of, lines of code, commits, everything is just growing and growing. It's not even steady growing, it's exponential. So nobody can kill it. Very healthy community. I don't hear anything. Where is the microphone? <laughs> Sorry, sorry, Bogdan. Where is the Halo code that you talked about? The restful taxonomy stuff. Um, I, I will ask Bin Chao because he made the mo they made the module, they shared it. They, they made a session last year, so they yeah. said they will raise it as open source, and it was released. I don't know where, maybe in the gallery. Uh, they have they made a REST API module to to call their APIs, even taxonomies. I'm just mentioning taxonomies because it was an issue for performance reasons in the, in their code, um, and this is what they are using. And if not, I will ask. Or you, I'm sure his email is online on the session from last year, and we can, uh, we, we can ask again. I talked to him again a few months back. They wanted again to, to share some stuff that they had done. Because for them, it's also a way to, to, make, to, 
to make their, their, their code alive. If it's used, they have to work on that to fix the issues, and that's good for them too. Yeah, I can't, I can't find it at all. Okay. No. Um, do you know if there is any plan uh, in the future for Orchard to get more into Microsoft marketing machine? This could be quite helpful to uh, to use in different clients Not if. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, the, the funny thing with uh, Microsoft marketing is that uh, I both hear people saying that Microsoft marketing is horrible and completely inefficient, and I also hear people saying that the only thing that Microsoft has is marketing, yeah, but market and the, the actual products suck. <laughs> Um, well, I think which is it? The machine <laughs> it means like yes, yes, yes. So could Microsoft actually uh, put some marketing effort behind our child and maybe potentially some other open source projects? So yeah, Martin yeah, I think that's something we should definitely look at um, when when uh, Microsoft are going in to talk to customers in the local field and explaining to them what you can do on top of the .NET platform and what there is available. Then for sure, that's that's definitely something we should look at. So. Yeah, a, a way to do that is when Martin presents something, he uses the old front logo and not the Umbraco logo, maybe something. Yeah, like that. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. You mentioned Ultra, you are here. Yeah, so. I, I made it even bigger <laughs> on the font size before I talked as well. So, you know. I was, was actually going to put on the, um, on the template of the new site as well, I was going to uh, beef up in the footer, you know, powered by Orchard and things and link back okay. to the project and just little things like that. But um, yeah, for sure, we can try. But like any Microsoft technology, the more people talk about it, the more developers will use it. And if you stop talking about something, developers won't use it anymore because they don't, it's marketing. Okay? If you don't hear about it, it's dead. Like, I don't know. Yeah. If you don't hear about SignalR, it's dead. He made SignalR. So, so. <laughs> No, I'm, you know what I mean. The more even speakers come to conferences and talk about it, or summit sessions, like if you go to your local conferences, you want to talk about web development, you could say, oh, I will submit a session about Orchard just to show the platform and what you can do, or these websites, or whatever, and uh, we'll give you pizza. We'll get you stickers. How about that? I mean, you know, definitely. Yeah, yeah, stickers, yeah. I, I, yeah sure. The last stickers I had, the last sticker I had last year, I stick it on the door of the building on, the, on my room, okay? 3R. And then they moved us and they put entity framework in the room. They removed the sticker to put the unicorn instead. I'm like, no, this was my Orchard sticker. No more Orchard sticker. We need Orchard stickers. Send the PR to the swag reaper. I'll get them, get them done. Another good way of not being too tight with Microsoft and community driven instead of Microsoft driven, even if it's open source, is the fact that we have a choice not to use Microsoft only solutions. Like, we, were not, we didn't have to use Anti Framework, we could use an Ibanet. So it's, uh, it's also easing on this way. We, we don't have to be bound by the vision. Okay, we, we can diverge. And probably this is something an advantage. So um, there is not a big mammoth behind it. It's Microsoft. It's a cute open source project. So I would rather use it. The Microsoft could probably give some some marketing uh, uh, backwind, uh, but it could be controversial. Who is deploying Orchard on Azure? Who is deploying Orchard on something else than Azure? Okay, alpha and alpha, I would say. So we need to convince everyone else to move on Azure. It's better on Azure. I can help you. Ping me, I will help you. Matt will go on Azure Web Apps instead of Azure Cloud Services because it's better for him. Okay, so things like that. I can help. I'm paid for that. Make me work. Regarding the question on uh, Microsoft effort in the, the Orchard, uh, Orchard project, what, what is your commitment today to the Brochart broch or VNext, etc.? I think uh, I believe the community can grow a product, but to start from scratch, it, can it be driven by a community? I have no commitment today uh, as for Brochart. I have no commitment. I mean, I'm not obliged to do anything for or against. They don't, say, they don't tell me don't do broad and they don't tell me do broad 
I do what I want. It's beautiful. <laughs> but, yeah. Every year I say that. It's, I do what I want and I'm paid for it. What, what could I ask for? Um, so as soon as we as a community decide to go full on Brochard, we'll be, f sorry, Orchard to Zero. Stop using Brochard, it's a bad name. <laughs> Orchard to Zero, then I go full on, on Brochard to Zero and drive the, the ideas and also participate to what Nick and Bertrand are deciding and, and crush it and, and uh, your access. You, yeah. <laughs> or if anyone, if, yeah. If more people go into the repository, that will also help and start making maybe meetings about it. And it's all community based. Look at the dynamic forms and the layouts. Someone did that, and we knew we needed that. It's if someone wants to drive it or to push it, yeah, it will be pushed. It will progress. You don't. You, you should not wait for us to do something. Okay. Or you can, co as a community, force us to do something. Okay. You, the people, you elected us. You elected us to represent you to do something to drive the project. So if some people have ideas and you want to elect them or to push some ideas, this is the moment to do that. Because we will start the election right after the, the, um, the conference is done. This was the goal also of the conference. We done the conference, we can meet people, and there will be new elections. For those who don't know, every year we elect the committee members, five today, Piotr, Sipke, myself, Zotan, and Bertrand. Um, I am the dictator because nobody wants to be a dictator. So OK, that's me. But next year, I will find some new dictators. We'll see. Um, maybe Bertrand will be back the dictator. Now he's back to make Microsoft. We'll see if he's elected, because who knows? <laughs> Surprises, you know? No, I think, I, I think uh, it should change. Yeah. Uh, I, I, don't like like, uh, I, I don't like you know, the benevolent dictators for <coughs> life. I think that's not very healthy. Uh, I, I, I this is actually why I, I, I didn't want to, uh, okay, so to be to dictator leave. anymore. Okay, I will leave. Uh, Promise. And uh, I, I think it should be someone else than this guy next time. Some better one. Some better one for sure. Young guys, old and guys. Not, me. Uh, not back to me. Definitely not. Okay. So, what was the question? Sorry, I diverted. Um, Orchard yeah. yeah, that's it. If, if you push us to work on Orchard to Zero and no more on Orchard 1.11 or 1.12, yeah, we'll switch. At the same time, we are reaching a, a point where there's not, not many new features we can add to 1. whatever. We still have a lot of work for sure, but we could focus more time on Orchard to Zero to, to start it, yeah. We don't want to be too late in the .NET Core framework um, <laughs> because .NET Core framework needs us. And uh, because if we are too late, maybe the community will go somewhere else. Bad for you. Because Orchard is better. So you want the same principles in Orchard to zero. I think so. So how do we do that? Do we vote? Or oh, so for, to elect the community, yes, you vote. You didn't no, vote no, last year. No, to, to decide, focus you, on Orchard to zero. You come every Tuesday and you shout, <laughs> when the, what about Orchard to zero? I want to talk about it. What did you do last week? Or uh, what's the plan? And can we define a plan? So the, Nick mentioned uh, this morning that the project has six contributors. <laughs> so that, that, can, that can be changed. You just have to contribute to it. Uh, it's open source after all. And uh, I'd like to point out that you have how many, 100 stars on the project? 108. 108 as of lunchtime. Yeah. And, oh, and one other thing. Someone is writing a, pro oh. Someone is writing a product on top of it already. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but. Yeah, uh, so uh, th this shows that there is interest in, in the project, definitely. Uh, maybe we haven't said go ahead and, and, and participate, but yeah, go ahead and participate, sure, uh, by all means. What and we could uh, do also, maybe, maybe setting up a design meeting for uh, Orchard to Zero, a regular yeah. one, so there is a, a live behind that, which is separate from the Orchard work, but just design meeting to discuss how to do things, and people would be happy, well, would be open to join to, to this. So, so there, there kind of has been um, on... Missed it, sorry. On, well, on GitHub. I put ideas on there, and people okay. have been contributing, like uh, Bertrand, even Zoltan, and um, Sipka. So I didn't. Sorry, you. I like to talk. I like to talk. So yeah, uh, I missed th it. Th there has been a lot of design talk already. Okay.
Okay then. Good. Done. To the beach. This was it. To the beach. To the beach. Thank you guys. Yeah.